everybody, I'm Nicole Facto. I am the chairman of the Berwick Planning Board, longtime Berwick resident, and a longtime Berwick real estate agent as well. And I'm here to talk to you today about building permits and the importance of building permits and what exactly you need a building permit for. So in the land use ordinance, you can go to the, uh, the table, which starts on page 34 and continues through, and you'll see, you know, I reference this all the time, but <laughs> you'll see in the table there's um, P's, and P's mean permitted. And permitted, if something is permitted in an area, it means you can do it, but you need a permit. So for instance, if you are building a, let's see, I wanna find something like really applicable, like if you're building a shed. So structure, structures accessory to allowed uses. I don't even like the way that looks, so we're gonna change that. Um, but so an accessory structure, so basically a shed or some, something similar, is permitted al almost all the way across the board, which means that yes, you can build a shed, but you need a permit for it. Um, so, so if you are considering doing some kind of work, you should check the table first. But also, you can go to page 108 in your land use ordinance, and there's a whole um, there's a whole thing about administration enforcement and penalties. So, what you need them for? The following actually, this is what you don't need them for, and this is directly from the LUO. The following activities shall not require a use permit. Repairs, replacement, and or normal maintenance, not requiring structural elements, decorative changes in existing structures or buildings, patios, fences, driveways, not to exceed lot coverage, and yard sales, provided that the activity is in conformance with federal, state, and local laws and does not involve any physical modifications or changes requiring a permit under this ordinance. So basically, if you're, if you're doing a minor repair, minor maintenance, minor replacement of something, it's not going to require a permit. If you are ever in doubt, ask code enforcement. Um, Jenny McCabe is our code enforcement officer. She's very easy to get in touch with. You can email her, you can send her um, or give her a, a call, leave her a message, she will get back to you. Usually within 24 hours, you can be guaranteed that you are going to have a response from Jenny. I can be reached on my cell phone at 207-752-6103 or via email at code at berwickmaine.org. If you should have any further questions or you want to discuss something upcoming projects that you may be doing in your house, um, feel free to reach out at any time. I really look forward to meeting with you and working with you. If by chance you have recently done one of these um, things that needs a, a permit, you are able to go into the office after the fact and get a permit. And so when you do a permit after the fact, the permit cost is going to be double. And that's fine. That's a mea culpa. My bad. Um, go and get your permit. If you are selling your house, here's why permits are important. Basically, obviously, so that you're doing things safely. But if you're selling your house, a appraiser is going to come to the town hall, they're gonna pull your tax card, and your permit actually will also flag your assessing card. So if you add a detached garage and a driveway, or if you add a shed to your house, once you, your permit, your CO is fulfilled, then that will go onto your assessing card, so it's counted as something that is on your property. And when an appraiser comes in to look at your assessing card, it'll say, oh yes, they have a, they have a detached garage, and you can sell your house as with a detached garage your assessing card has to match what's on your property. Um, we see violations all the time. If you see something, say something. So the important thing to remember is that the building permit process is not supposed to be a scary process. Um, it's not a hard process and it's not particularly stringent beyond regular health and safety measures. But the purpose of it is to uh, just make sure that people are doing things safe and what happens is the fine or the fees that we collect from the permitting process, the conditional use process, et cetera, that goes to contribute toward the staff at town hall. So that pays for our code enforcement officer, that pays for our town planner, and that reduces our tax basis. So it's important to remember that you're coming in and paying these fees and it's to re it will reduce the tax basis in general. Um, they offset the tax rate. So if, the, if you are found in violation, so if you are, um, we've done this a few times actually, there's some, there's some big violations that we've had. So any person, firm, or corporation being the owner or having control or use of any structure or premises 
who violates any of the provisions of this ordinance shall upon conviction be fined not less than $100 nor more than $2,500 for each violation. Each day such a violation is permitted to exist after notifications shall constitute a separate offense. Fines shall be payable to the town. So that's a pretty big thing and we have had people find uh, thousands of dollars a day for being in violation. So it's important, get your permits. If you have questions, please feel free to call code enforcement or leave her an email. I'm sure all of her information is right here. If you have any other questions, you can um, send me an email. My information is right here. And um, that's all for this week.